oceans do make for some beautiful places to explore. However, in this episode, we dive into some of the realities we have come to face and what you will too if you begin to spend time in the ocean. Just such a massive issue that pisses me right off. And these boundless oceans also have their limits. What's happened, Riley? Join us as we're reminded of the limits of Mother Nature. The limits of our reality. Yeah, we may have run aground. And for our second youngest crew member, the limits of acceptable behaviour. What's this? It's a mess. <laughs> We're currently located in the Exuma Islands. The visibility has been astounding these past few days. Perhaps the best we've ever experienced. Today, we're set to get wet and explore the marine wonders of the Bahamas. Whilst we have a surprising week of total glass off, minus the random squall here and there, Riley and David plan to stock up on some much needed food for the boat because it's been a fair old while since our last catch. What did you spend all last night doing, really? Researching the difference between normal anti-fouling and copper coat and furlers for cableless reaches. So I sent a few emails out and got some stuff back and I, I knew most of what I found, but yeah, I got stuck in a bit of a wormhole. May have stayed up a little late. Researching for the new boat, <laughs> there's a lot. See. Before Riley and David would hit the water to find us some fish, it was high time for a crew workout. It's a lot calmer now than it was in that past, eh? Yeah. We were punching up. I reckon they must have been 10 metre waves coming out here. No, but it was pretty gnarly. <laughs> and then we've been diving on this ledge here, but we haven't seen much apart from a turtle and a, and a sharks. A grouper that was just, so it was as big as this tender. I'm not exaggerating about that one. <laughs> a few moments later. Okay, so you got nothing. Right? Yeah, you can put it that way. That what was happened? really intense. Well, I'll tell you what happened to Lona. A dive boat came up mm -hmm. and it was, they're feeding sharks. Oh my God. And they, they landed right on our head. And then David went down and shot a grouper. Grouper. Oh my gosh. And it went under a thing. And then. All the sharks came out. Eight sharks came at us. I just got goosebumps thinking about that. What were the sharks? Are they big? Nah, I just didn't trust them at yeah. all, considering they were, they were feeding them. Really, nearby. really close. Because at the beginning, the shark were a little away, so I was like, ah, we're good. So on the way to the dinghy, I turned and looked his face, and his face was really concerned. I was like, he must have something in the water. <laughs> I look and then I saw all the sharks like literally like that close to like try to kind of be sneaky on us and then I started kicking lower so it doesn't splash because we were making little splash before mm. so the sharks were really circling us and then uh, yeah I was looking forward to get on the dinghy <laughs> I got on the dinghy first <laughs> and just when we thought that being chased by a school of sharks was bad enough we are just kissing the bottom this one more so, but yeah, let's um, I'll swim. You don't lift this up because the back will go down and just come in on the anchor. So 
we had to move spots ever so slightly. Why is that? Three power boats rocked up with about 70 tourists. So we actually moved this morning to get away from the tourist boats and we came here, but we had to move again because the rudder was touching the sand. We came back on low, low tide, man David did from spearfishing. I was like, this is very shallow and I jumped in the water. The rudders were just kissing the sand like this. Yeah, we may have ran aground. So, I'd just like to speak a little bit about coral reefs and my experience with them over the years. When I first jumped on a boat, nearly a decade ago now, it's been a long time. Mm. I've been, I'm getting pretty salty. <laughs> uh, I was expecting to sail around the world, jump into the ocean and just be blown away by all of these insane coral reefs, like uncharted places and, and just how incredible it would all be. And it's not. Every day it's disappointing. It's really clear what humans are doing to our coral reefs. Since 1950, over half of the ocean's coral reefs has disappeared. And that's because... That's a lot. Yeah, half. Since 1950, that wasn't that long ago. In my personal experience, has only spanned, you know, let's say 10 years. In general, it's just way less beautiful and there's way less colours and, and whatever yeah, than when I, I ever would have thought. Yeah, when I first set out with Riley on the boat, I was really expecting everywhere we went to have like such incredible reefs. And, well, I mean, we started in Europe. There's not a single fan coral there. I haven't seen any coral in, in Europe. But they've been fishing there for years. So overfishing is a big problem, um, chemical runoff and oil spills, climate change, obviously, obviously and the rising temperatures of the ocean. Um, this has a huge impact on coral and coral is bleaching and they're dying. So it's a fairly interesting concept. The reason there are more isolated thunderstorms on hot still days is because there's more humid air. And counterintuitively, moist hot air is lighter than cool dry air and it wants to rise. So the moist air continues to rise vertically throughout the day because of the building energy. The downdraft phase of a storm cell is accompanied by the characteristic phenomena that most of you would have seen, such as lightning and thunder, showers, sometimes hail, and a gust front. They can even deliver a microburst gust of over a hundred knots, which is well into the hurricane category. Do you know there's a squall coming? Oh, say, it's a squall! It's a squall! Jeez. And me and Darwin were just chilling here, weren't we? What have we found? Oh, there it is. It's behind the pot plant. It's a little lizard inside. Oh, you find it? There it is, yeah. Lenny, no. I want the daddy. No, you can't get him. He's going to eat all the mosquitoes. Please let you, but you leave him. He's our pet lizard now. What should we call the lizard? What's happening? Well, this is the impeller. We're replacing the exterior impeller housing. What a bump. So we need more winches. <laughs> We've left baby Darwin on the boat sleeping with David, and we're all gonna go diving this morning. Firstly, to try and find some fish. We haven't been too lucky with that lately. Or a lobster, that'd be nice. And then to a beautiful coral reef. That is 
He's got a lionfish, Lenny. spoken about coral reefs and about how um, I feel about the whole situation but definitely the thing that's impacting my feelings on the, the issue in its entirety is overfishing because if you see a bunch of fish like a, a really healthy ecosystem hanging around just a little bit of um, moss or, or um, what do you call moss underwater? Algae. 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 Algae, algae is good sitting on a, a rock, that still looks beautiful, but and you don't see that either. So overfishing is just such a massive issue that pisses me right off. We see off. so many fishing trawlers around, dodgy looking fishing trawlers just all the time. And when we're diving reefs, you can really tell which ones have been hit Smashed. by these particular trawling nets that you know take everything from the sea turtles to sharks and you know all for that tiny little fish that we're buying we do encourage people to learn a bit more i'm actually going to put a link in the description below because they can say it way better than we can here it'll probably take a long time for us to explain all the ways that we can help but yeah um, i'm just really mad i'm not even i'm like disappointed yep but <laughs> it's really, really scary what's happening. We really hope that our kids, Lenny and Darwin, by the time they have kids or even grow up, that they're still coral. I'll probably just teach them to play cricket. <laughs> You're being annoying. Yeah, I am. Casually floating to the island. This is the clearest water I think I've ever seen. I don't think it gets clearer than this, hey? I can't imagine how it would. We just threw the anchor out. What's the plan, Captain? We're going to go for a swim. We're going to tag team with the babies. Lenny just wants to jump off and swim. He isn't really admiring the reef just yet. Would it be okay if you put some sunscreen on my back, darling, before I burn and perish? All right. Talk in the camera. Say hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. Where are we? Where are we? We are on the boat. Uh, yeah, um, we're near the island. Tell them, say, we're near the island. What are you doing? Are you gonna leave us? Yeah. I'm just. Darwin's just yeah. weighing on me. <laughs> weighing on you. Is he? Yeah. Oh. Huh. Like the clarity of the water, those fish, they're so friendly and they're so photogenic. Like, you can't put the You can't go wrong here, can yeah. you? Yeah. You ready, Lenny? Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs>
lucky to have snorkeled with a couple of different coral reefs in the past few days. We're mostly seeing sea fans and brain corals, elk horn coral, trumpet fish and these tiny little curious fish that were circling around us called gruntfish that indeed got their name from the grunting sounds they make by grinding their teeth. Although Riley's really, how do I word it nicely, pissed off about what we're doing to our oceans, I'm hopeful that humans will continue to work together and find ways to help restore and protect our underwater rainforests and the creatures that call this place home. Please do check the link in the description box to learn more on how you can help. without anything so we had to come back with them. Holy cow! Oh, they are large. Whoa you guys. Happy with them. Okay what's the story and who got what? Uh, team efforts both. Uh, David keeps stealing fish off me. Okay. I find them and then he slays them. <laughs> uh, I, I shot that one and then he got off and then he went in and, and got him out of the hole and this one here uh, I found and David got. It's just, it was very much a team effort today. Yeah. And then this one here, well, you can explain, it was hiding under the rock. Yeah. Uh, we were pulling the dinghy, we were drifting, and he saw that, well, we saw that one, and he went for it, and he followed it until it's, it went in the little cave. And, um, and then I freed over on the cave, and then I saw it. it was really deep inside, and I knew that if I shoot it, I don't know if I would be able to take the fish out of there and the spear, but I did oh, it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> the fish was like there and it had a rock there and I tried to pull my spear, like it was really tight. I tried to pull my spear and get as close as his head as I could and I couldn't see where I spear because I could see only the tail of the fish. So I shot it in the body and uh, from there we probably work for like 30 minutes to get this fish out of there. Wow. Yeah, probably, maybe, but we're both really cold. We're sitting there hugging our knees and uh, taking in terms of diving it down. We had to, in the end, we had to push, we pulled the pole out and then pushed it back in and then pulled it out again and then had to like flick a bit of wire over a rock to get it out. Jeez. Yeah, and we're Down and in, like it, it was, it was eight, eight foot inside the hole. But we got it. Yeah. <laughs> nice work, guys. Fish for days. Lenny, you look at the big fish? It's as big as you, Lenny. Big as. Look. You want to touch it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> What's wrong, Mama? <laughs> Nothing. Isn't it a bit strange that we have so much spear fishing in the same episode? We're complaining about the lack of fish and coral. I go along and I'm deliberately not shooting a whole bunch of different fish, including Nassau grouper, any fish, any reef that looks like it is overpressured, I'm being very, very selective. We live off the land to a certain extent, and I'm very proud of that. And I, I don't think, I think that's like the best way to do stuff. Maybe better would be to just be vegetarian for climate change and all that sort of stuff. And there's a, there's a few valid points there, I think. But we all know that the major problem is just massive importation, exportation of huge amounts of fish gathered by super trawlers. That's that's the issue. Do I even do I need to say that? <laughs> like I feel like surely everyone knows that. Well thank you for providing for the fam. That's alright.
I've said it many times, I know I would change my ways, I know for sure When all the crows decide to meet They settle down beneath my feet I've got it right and I got it wrong But I learned my lesson hanging on Come sit here with me by the fire Ugh. Oh, it splashed me in the eye. Salt and fish and sugar. So be here as the night starts falling Let my fingers walk over your head Nothing to be scared of I'd rather be with you than by myself Not always in your head What's this? It's a mess <laughs> It is a mess That's naughty <laughs> Why did you do that? I borrowed that, Mama. You borrowed it? Yeah. Did you? Are you going to use all this on your bum? Yeah. Oh no. Give me a smoke fish, baby. <laughs> oh, I'm so happy. The smoke fish is back. Yeah.